Hello everyone and welcome to lesson 22 of Objective C on the Mac. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering how we can use the NS number class in Objective C. So you're probably just thinking, well, why would the heck would I ever want to use an NS number? It seems like the most useless class in the entire library or foundation toolkit. And probably because um, it does sound useless because it's just an NS number. However, um, you'll understand why it's useful uh, by the time we're done this tutorial. So I'm not really going to explain why uh, or how it works right now, but I'll get into that when we come across our example. So let's go ahead and create an NS mutable array. And this is probably the best example of why we'd want to use NS numbers. So go ahead and create an NS mutable array. We're going to create an auto-release version, so uh, it's just uh, we don't have to worry about the memory management of it. So uh, NS, mutable rural, NS mutable array, and we just say array with capacity 4, and again, the array with capacity just means that we create an array to start with a capacity of 4, but it can expand as it goes on. We only want to put 4 numbers in this, so we should be good. So now, we just want to create a for loop int i is going to get a value of 0. As long as i is less than 4, that's uh, going to add 4 different numbers, and i++. plus plus. So we all know how for loops work, this isn't uh, anything new. So we just created an array, and we'd like to add all these different numbers, so every value of i into our array. So let's say array add object, and now we want to put in the value of i. So uh, continuing on here, we're going to Go to ns log this percent at, and we want to just print out the array. So what's essentially going to happen here? We're trying to add this value of i into our array. So just keep that in mind, and we're going to go ahead and run this and see what happens. So as you can see, there's some major issue that happens here. There's some total ns exception going on, and so obviously there's some problem. And um, I'm not even going to go into this. It's too complicated to even explain. So all we're really going to know is uh, I'm just going to tell you what's wrong with it. So um, if you remember back to the NS array or NS mutable array tutorial uh, tutorials, um, I was saying that the NS arrays of any kind can't add uh, anything else other than objects. And by objects, I don't mean primitive types. So uh, it, I'm sure if you've been working with Objective-C, you've probably tried this at some point to add a number into your array, and you've probably had this exact same error. So essentially how we uh, get around this is we use an NS number. The reason we can't add um, this number as it is, we can't add this integer into our array, is because it's not an object. We need to be adding an object into our um, array. We can't add primitive types. So how do we get around this? Well, what we use uh, is an NS number. An NS number is just basically a class that holds the value of the integer. So NS number, and now we can just use a class method, which is number with, and then there's basically, NS number can hold any type of number that you basically create or have. So as you can see here, these, there's just a ton of other methods that we can use. As you can see, number with bool, number with double, number with float, number with int. And what we want to use here is number with int. But that's just um, to show you that you can use pretty much any number um, that's a primitive type, and you can put it into an NS number object. So here we just want to say number with int, and we want to throw in the value of i. So we just threw in a number with an integer value of i. So what happens here? Well, again, we create an NS number. We are creating a number with an integer value of i. So our NS number will now hold um, it will now hold that value of i since i is zero. We're putting that or our i keeps incrementing, but to start it has a value of zero. So we create an NS number. It now has a value of zero, and uh, this method here will return an NS number object. So now we can freely add these NS numbers into our array because they're objects. An NS number is an object, and so now, we, of course, we can add it to our array. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to stop our program here. I guess it was still trying to run. Anyway, so uh, 
retry, and as you can see, zero, one, two, three, and everything worked fine. So again, the reason for this is we can't add primitive types into our arrays. We need to add an object, and to do this, we wrap our numbers, our primitive types, in an NS number. And we can do this by just declaring a number with int, and that will just create um, an NS number. So again, with all this so far, we don't have to worry about memory management because we've been using auto-released objects. So we're all good, uh, in case you've been thinking about that. So now let's go on to another thing, which is retrieving the values of the NS numbers and putting them back into primitive types. So can we do this? And yes, we can, just like Bob the Builder would say. So here we go. We're going to create an NS number. Just call it uh, N. And now we just want to take some value out of our array. So we're just going to say array, uh, object at index, and now we want to take the value at index 1. So uh, the object at index 1 actually has a value of 1. So our ns number n now gets the object at index 1, which is an ns number. And since that ns number contains an integer with a value of 1, our uh, variable n right here is going to get the value of that ns number, or 0.2 technically. So here, now, we want to assign an integer to this value of our ns number. So how can we get the ns number to give back the integer value that it originally stored in it? So we can actually use another method, or a bunch of methods that are in our ns number class, and basically how these work is you kind of, they're all the exact same, you just have the type that you want to return basically, and then value. So these methods look like this, int value, and that would return uh, kind of self-explanatory, but since n is an ns number, int value will just return the value of that n holds in integer form. So this method will return an integer, and or an int, I should say, and now our num will get the value that this will return. So I should also just note that um, there are also tons of other methods. There's double value, there's float value, there's all these other ones that belong to the different values that you're trying to take out of the ns number. So here we just want to take out int value because we're trying to get an integer. So here we go, we just returned uh, the int value from our ns number, and now our uh, normal primitive type int of num holds this value. So now let's just try to ns log this. And as you can see when I print this out, and now we should have a value of 1 when this prints. And as you can see, we get a value of 1. So very nice, very nice. So there's also a few other methods, and I'm just going to cover two of them briefly. And there are a few other ones, but uh, I'll leave those for uh, something else or you can look them up in the developer uh, documentation if you want as well. So another one is uh, the method that is string value. And this will actually return um, the string, basically a string that holds the number value in it. So uh, much easier to just show you instead of talking about it. So uh, we create an NS string, and we just want to return the string value of this number. So what this will basically do is it'll take the uh, value of n, and we'll just return a string that holds that number value. So that's pretty self-explanatory. It's just returning an ns string, and it's uh, it, the string will just say whatever the value or the number has. So now I just want to print out the string object. So I just say str, and as you can see, when I build and run this, I also get another value of one because that's what. Um, and holds. But this time it's actually in a string, it's actually not printing, printing out a number. So there is a difference between those two. So last but not least, we have the string, or the is equal to number, is equal to number, yes, uh, is equal to number method. Basically it compares two numbers. So uh, let's just do an if statement here, and we can say uh, num, and actually I have to put these in square brackets, num is equal to and why isn't this typing out? I don't know, but it should be working. I don't know. Num is equal to number. And let me just try that again, because that was kind of odd. I feel like it should be auto-filling this in for me. 
no, or I know why it's not working, because I'm trying to use my integer value of num, and I said that this was n. I'm using the wrong variable, and that's why it's not working. So anyway, I'm trying to uh, compare two ns numbers together, and I'm going to use the is equal to number method. So n, and we just say is equal to number, there we go, that's what I was looking for, and we can compare two different ns numbers. So uh, let's just say I want to take um, another value out of the array, and I'll actually just take the same value for the sake of checking this. So I'll just say array and object at index 1. So since um, n has the object at index 1, of course these two numbers are the exact same. So n is equal to number, uh, this number, which is the exact same number, they both have the value of 1. So basically is the ns number containing a value of 1, is that equal to number and then we're comparing the exact same number. So of course it's equal. And so it would return uh, a bool value of yes. So it is true. So now I could nslog this to say that this was successful. And I could say, um, yo, this number is the same. And I don't know, that's probably not right to actually say, but you get my idea. Um, you're just comparing the number on this side, and you're just saying, is it equal to the number on this side? And if they are, then um, this is going to run, and you'll see, yo, this number is the same. We could also do an else if we wanted to, and we could just say, um, let's just say the same thing, except we'll say, yo, this number is not equal, or not the same. I don't know, whatever. You get the point. So um, let's just run this one time through. So we have, again, n, which is our ns number up here, and it has the value of 1 from our array. And then we're saying, well, okay, is this equal to the number? And then we're comparing the exact same number because, again, both of them have the object of the array or the object at index of the array um, at 1. So, of course, they're the exact same number. So we should get this printout, yo, this number is the same. So let's go ahead, build and run this, and as you can see, yo, this number is the same. So now let's compare a different number on the array. So now this time, n, let's, we're checking to see, is equal to the number, is, oh, is n equal to the number, and then we're comparing this number. So since the array, the object in index 2, actually has an ns number value of 2, the numbers aren't the same. They're not the same uh, values inside the ns number. So this if statement isn't going to be run, and now we're going to get else to be run, and it's going to say, yo, this number is not the same. So let's go ahead and build this, and as you can see, yo, this number is not the same. So that's pretty much how the ns number class works. The main things you have to get out of it is that uh, the main purpose probably of using ns numbers is to add them into arrays. Since you can't add primitive types into your ns arrays, that's why we like to use the ns number class to wrap basically the number value into an ns number. So we can create an ns number by using the class method number with, and then you can use whatever value you want, double, bool, and you get the idea. So here, this is how we create an ns number. And we, that's, that allows us to add it to the array, since now we have an ns number object. And we can also retrieve the values back uh, into a primitive type form by using uh, basically type and then value. So, uh, for example, int value, double value, float value, etc. And then also we have the string value method, which will return an ns number as a string. And then we also have the is equal to number method, which compares to see if two numbers are equal to each other. So anyway, that's pretty much um, most of the methods that we have in the ns number class. If you want to check out uh, some of the other ones, you can also uh, just look it up in developer documentation. Pretty easy to understand. But I just wanted to cover the main reasons that we use ns number. Uh, and the main thing is just once more around is that we create an ns number by using the number with value or number with whatever type, and that will create an ns number. And then we can retrieve that value by using some kind of type value method. So that's pretty much how ns number works. The main purpose is to be able to add 
some kind of object into um, something versus having to add a primitive type. So that's really what NS number allows us to do. It wraps our primitive types into an object. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, stay, stay tuned for uh, all the other ones that are around. And also check out some of the C tutorials if you haven't already. Um, there's tons of other tutorials on the channel. So anyway, um, I'll see you next tutorial.